As we all know, Bleach is going to be having a big announcement on the 21st of March at Anime Japan 2020. However, it is dependent upon the event still going ahead or not. The organizers have stated that due to the recent outbreak of the virus, they may be forced to cancel the event. So hoping that everything still goes ahead and to help build some hype and buzz leading up to this mysterious announcement, I wanted to make a few more Bleach videos. Let's start with looking back at each of the Bleach movies. I want to begin by reviewing my favourite movie out of the four Bleach movies, Memories of Nobody. Before the video begins, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any of my future uploads. Bleach Movie 1 was released in Japan on December 16th, 2006, the week that Bleach Episode 107 aired on TV. When a long-running shonen series goes on long enough, the anime studios usually produce a yearly movie to help push the momentum of the franchise. My first experience with anime movies would be the 13 Dragon Ball Z movies. They had an average runtime of 50 minutes and featured storylines which had very inconsistent writing. Some of the movies were better than others, but for the most part, anime movies based on popular shonen anime are known for being pointless and boring. Bleach Movie 1 was the first anime movie I watched outside of the DBZ movies. It had a feature length movie runtime of 93 minutes which was the first positive. I remember that I felt that the story would not be under the same time constraints that the DBZ movies were notorious for. I hated how DBZ movies set up a big stage, a villain and a final fight which just rushes to a conclusion with the protagonist conveniently unleashing their signature arse pull attack to end the fight. What I liked about this Bleach movie was that it was telling a story that it wanted you to feel invested in. It wasn't just a one-off villain appearing and a cool fight at the end. Despite memories of nobody having some of these elements in the story, it does give fans a little bit more. What I always found fun about the Bleach movies was that the opening and endings of the anime would change to feature clips from the movies to help to promote them. That was another incentive to check out the movies. Seeing some of the cool battles and movie exclusive characters as the subbed episodes were being released really built up a hype for the movies at the time. Not only the Bleach movies, but anime movies in general would not be available for international fans until months later when the movie had concluded its theatrical run and was released on DVD for fan subbers to purchase so that they could rip and sub it for the rest of the world. Back in 2006 it was a different time, unlike today where major anime movies like Dragon Ball Super Broly and One Piece Stampede which are released in cinemas in the west just a few weeks after their Japanese theatrical debuts. I remember feeling really anticipated to watch this first Bleach movie. So Memories of Nobody can be assumed to take place outside of the Bleach canon and serves as a side story never meant to meet up with the ongoing timeline of the manga or anime. Some fans do dispute that the movie is canon and even Kubo does mention watching the movie in some interviews, but I have always considered it as a filler additional side story. The movie begins with Ichigo and Rukia coming across spirits called Blanks. This is where we are introduced to the mysterious Shinigami called Sena who destroys the Blanks with the Shikai release of a Zanpakuto. It appears that Sena has forgotten what Shinigami division she belongs to and she attacked the Blanks because she felt it was the right thing to do. Rukia puzzled by the appearance of Senna and the Blanks heads back to the Soul Society to report about the strange occurrences. Meanwhile, Ichigo is tasked to stay with Senna and to not let her out of his sight. We see that Senna appears to be carefree and laid back, while Ichigo tries to get some answers out of her about who she is. Hitsugaya interrupts Ichigo and takes him to Urahara's shop to inform him that a city within the human world suddenly appeared above the Serete. Urahara explains that the human world and the Serete remain separate due to the Dungai which exists between them, but a new dimension has appeared within the Dongai a few days ago, which has grown larger in size, to the point that it now connects the human world to the Serete. Urahara concludes that this is the reason that the human world is appearing in the Serete. Ichigo also adds that he encountered the Blanks earlier, which prompts Hitsugaya to mention the Valley of Screams. Urahara explains that some souls can accidentally be removed from the process of passing over to the Soul Society, leading to them becoming lost and destined to wander the Dongai aimlessly. Urahara continues by stating that when a a large collection of lost souls gather within the Dangai, it forms a new dimensional space called the Valley of Screams. And it is here within the Valley of Screams that a soul has its energy and memory separated so that they may return to the natural cycle and be reincarnated into the Soul Society. The blanks that Ichigo saw earlier were spirit energy which have had their memories removed. This prompts Ichigo to ask what happens to their memories if the spirit energy becomes blanks. Urahara reveals that the memories of all of the spirits merge into one being. This entity 
then returns to the human world and is known as the Shinenju. Although the Valley of Screams is a natural phenomenon and has occurred previously without consequence, the issue is that this newly formed Valley of Screams is connecting the human world to the Soul Society. Hitsugaya further adds that this is being done intentionally by someone. Kon also remembers seeing a mysterious armoured man standing in the crowd of blanks earlier. Urahara guesses that this individual would have been looking for the Shinenju. While Urahara continues to research the enemy's motives, Ichigo returns to find Senna. He learns that she knows nothing about the Shinenju and the blanks, but she agrees to help Ichigo look for the Shinenju. Senna eventually begins to remember her memories while she was alive. Along with Ichigo's help, she tries to learn more about her past and who she is. The Gotai 13 appear and reveal to Ichigo that there is no present living Shinigami on record with the name Senna. Rukia also reveals that the Zanpakuto Senna was using was lost in the Dangai over 100 years ago, as well as the owner being absorbed by the Valley of Screams. When questioned how she arrived in the human world, Senna becomes confused. She can remember several different memories all at once, which don't make any sense and begin to cause her distress. Captain Ukitake reveals that the Shinenju they have been looking for is Senna. They have also learnt that the people behind these strange events are being led by a man called Ganryu, an exile from the Soul Society. He was banished to the Dangai. Hitsugaya reveals that Ganryu's plan is to merge the human world and the Soul Society to cause their destruction. His objective stems from a vendetta against the Soul Society for exiling him. It appears that the Shinenju is the key requirement for Ganryu to complete his goal. Hitsugaya says that they have been ordered to capture Senna. Ichigo objects to them taking Senna as he defends her and her existence. But suddenly Ganryu and his group attack Ichigo and company. They have returned to kidnap Senna, the Shinenju. Ichigo tries to stop Ganryu and his group called the Dark Ones from taking Senna, but he ultimately fails. Ganryu leaves with Senna and begins the final steps of his plan to destroy the two worlds. Ichigo ends up feeling responsible for Senna being kidnapped and begins to search for an entrance into the Valley of Screams. Urahara states that there should be one near to where the Shinenju Senna first appeared. Eventually finding the entrance, Ichigo enters to save Senna, while Rukia returns to inform the others that they have found it. Meanwhile, in the Valley of Screams, Ganryu explains that Senna is the Shinenju and has the memories of countless souls within her. When the Shinenju is placed within the center of the Valley of Screams, it causes the blanks to gather, searching for their memories. Once near the Shinenju, the blanks collide with each other, rapidly multiplying and causing the expansion of the Valley of Screams, leading to the human world and the Soul Society colliding together. In the Soul Society, Mayuri calculates that they have an hour to stop the destruction of the worlds. Head Captain Yamamoto refuses to send reinforcements to help Ichigo due to the time constraints of an hour, so instead he decides to fire up the Kido cannon to fire at the Valley of Screams. Ichigo arrives to save Senna, he confronts the Dark Ones while Senna is surrounded by blanks. While fighting alone, Ichigo is joined by Kimpachi and the other members of the Gotai 13. While they fend off the Dark Ones, Ichigo heads to Senna to save her. He faces off against the leader of the Dark Ones, Ganryu. He doesn't understand why he wants to save the Shinenju, as it is just a collection of memories and thoughts. But Ichigo defends Senna by saying that she is alive and here now. Ichigo could feel how afraid Senna was, knowing that she wanted help. In typical fashion, Ichigo has sworn to protect Senna and persists through fighting Ganryu. The Dark Ones are defeated by the Gotai 13 while Ichigo gets closer to Senna. Ganryu rushes towards Ichigo while he charges a Getsuka Tensho that he fires at Ganryu. At last, the enemy's leader is defeated and turns to Ash. Ichigo rescues Senna and leaves the Valley of Screams, returning to the human world. However, the Valley of Screams is still expanding and is linked to the human world and Shinigami world. Senna realizes that she can use the power of the blanks to return everything back to normal. She tells Ichigo she doesn't want the world that Ichigo lives in to be destroyed. Senna destroys the Valley of Screams and stops the destabilization of both worlds, returning everything back to normal. As a final request, Senna asks Ichigo to carry her to the graveyard where she believes her family rest. Senna, who at this point is clinging on to life, tells Ichigo that she lived nearby and lived here with her family. She asks Ichigo to check her name on the gravestone. It is a bittersweet finale as Senna asks Ichigo if her name is on the gravestone, but Ichigo doesn't see her name written on it. But to make her feel at ease before she disappears, Ichigo tells her that her name is there, making her feel like she was truly once alive in this world, that she grew to love. Ichigo affirms to her that she lived in this town with her family and was certainly alive before becoming a Shinenju. Senna, feeling happy hearing this, begins to fade away. Rukia later tells Ichigo that as the blank's energy completely disappears, so will the memory of Senna, since you cannot remember someone who didn't exist in the first place. The movie concludes with a post credit scene, with Ichigo walking while seeing a red hair ribbon similar to the one Senna had been wearing. He can hear a girl running towards him while she is talking to her friends. She runs past Ichigo as he realizes 
realizes she looks just like Senna. Ichigo smiles as he remembers her and continues walking forward. When it comes to anime movies, they never really live up to the expectations that are set out by the show that they are based off of, but the first Bleach movie left me feeling pleasantly surprised. It isn't perfect and it does have some problems, but I really found it to be enjoyable. Firstly, the characters from the show are all here, accompanied by Senna who quickly becomes a much loved character. Senna has a personality which is full of life and a love for being alive. She is curious, full of energy and strong willed. Despite being stubborn, her strong character is broken when she is haunted by memories of pasts which contradict any reasonable timeline she tries to relate them to. She even tells Ichigo how afraid she is and he can see her visibly shaking. It is definitely heart wrenching to see her exhibit such a carefree love for life but to realise she never was meant to exist. Throughout this movie, everyone constantly tells Ichigo that she is nothing but a shinenju, but he refuses to just accept her as a tool or a byproduct of the Valley of Screams. Ichigo adopts the shonen trope of, I don't care what you say, this person's life matters because they are alive trope. Ichigo helps Senna and validates her concerns once he realises the sadness associated with their existence. The ending to Senna's story shows that she cares for and respects Ichigo, as she sacrifices herself to save the human world and the soul society, ensuring the world Ichigo lives in is not destroyed. I loved how Ichigo reassures Senna in the final scenes of the movie, making her life feel validated. Senna cries as she hears Ichigo confirm she lived once. As a fun fact, Kubo mentions in the Bleach Jet art book, which was released in 2018, that Senna's character design is the design that he intended to use for Renji and Rukia's daughter, Ichika Abarai. He even goes on to say that their designs only differ when it comes to their colour schemes. The movie is scored with the same soundtrack from the anime, which I found to be a great choice, along with music composed just for the movie which is a nice treat for fans of the anime score. I definitely enjoyed the character interactions and the slice of life moments in this movie. I didn't particularly remember any of the battles or enemies for that matter. They were very forgettable and their motive seemed rather generic and unoriginal. The story is pretty predictable and can slow down especially during the moments when Ichigo and Senna are not present. And there wasn't really any plot twist aside from Senna sacrificing herself at the very end of the movie. As you watch the movie and try to piece together what the blanks are and who Senna is and who is behind the creation of the Valley of Screams, initially it is a very interesting concept and the ideas do enough to pull you into the story, but in the end I only really continue to be invested in Senna's character and the mystery surrounding her origin. Personally, I couldn't care less for a banished clan who wants to destroy the Soul Society. The movie was in need of a more memorable villain who can back up the level of threat that the movie was promising. Despite the movie setting up a time limit of an hour until the world is destroyed, the tension just doesn't feel present because the villains are predictably defeated. Like how Goku defeats almost all of the movie villains with an arse pull spirit bomb. Ichigo uses his signature Getsuka Tensho to defeat Ganryu. I am glad that the movie brought back almost all of the characters from the series, but some of them have little to no consequence if they weren't there. I didn't see the point of Uryu, Chad or some of the Gotai 13 being in this movie. Aside from familiarity, I didn't see much of a point in including so many characters that we see so little of. Despite the flaws within the movie, I still enjoyed it a lot. Memories of Nobody is entertaining enough to keep fans of the anime and manga engaged, but there is little here to enjoy if you have never seen or read Bleach, particularly due to the movie featuring many concepts and characters from the show itself. Senna and the enemies are the only new characters featured within the movie. Understandably, it would be confusing for newcomers. I love pieces of media which leave fans with endings that are open to interpretation. The ending to Memories of Nobody leaves fans wondering if Ichigo's memories were also erased. As he holds a red ribbon, a girl resembling Senna runs past him. Ichigo looks at her and smiles and decides to continue walking. And for me, this shows that in the end, he didn't forget Senna. The title Memories of Nobody refers to the collection of memories that Senna has as a Shinenju. She is born as someone who should have never existed. She is literally a nobody. The title of the movie fits so well with the story that is played out. The redeeming quality of this movie is the introduction of Senna and her character. You feel sorry for her and can't help but to get emotional at the movie's ending. As the movie progresses, you learn more about her character. And when you understand the significance of what she is and why she keeps remembering different memories, it is is upsetting. The movie largely feels like a prolonged filler episode, but surprisingly I enjoyed it more than any of the filler content featured within the anime. Memories of Nobody also ends with a credit song which is sung by the band Aqua Times, and it rings through with a lot of nostalgia listening to it over 10 years after watching the movie for the first time. I definitely recommend fans of Bleach to watch this movie if they haven't, because it can't hurt to have more fans of Senna and her story. If you like this review then subscribe and stick around for more content and leave any suggestions in the comments. I read almost everything that is posted there.